Let's talk to Ryan Littlestone. He is a trader and analyst at ForexFlow.live. Very good morning to you, young Ryan. Good morning, Nick. How are you? Living the dream. Right, two slides to go through. Let's kick off with the euro, US dollar, four-hour charts. Uh, what are your observations? Um, well, as we were speaking about last week, we were up against a, a big level up here, uh, sort of 1740, 1750, and we got a decent break of it. Um, what I wanted to talk about today briefly is just uh, is looking at how you how you trade these big levels when they do break. Um, you know, what we'd seen all last week was uh, resistance up towards the sort of 1720, 2530 area, and it held and held and held and held for, for a good few weeks. Um, that showed us that there was protection of this this 40, 50 level. Um, so then you, you tend to think as a trader, what happens if it breaks? Um, and the, the way to play it is by sticking in a buy stop just above these levels yeah. and uh, running with it. So uh, I did that last week um, as we put out on, on site. I had a buy stop through that 25 area, um, another one through the 55 area, just above those resistance points. And uh, fortunately, I caught a good break and it, it rode all the way up to 1800 and I offloaded just before then. But what you then now need to look at is if it does fail at the top, where is that price going to stop? Yep. Um, and we saw it fail into 1800 up there and it's come all the way back down and, and it stopped almost on a dime on that 1725 area again. Um, and, you know, that's that's bread and butter for, for good traders and, and traders with experience just to look at those levels and say, right, we broke there. It was heavy resistance. We need to look at it for support. And, and it's worked in the main. OK, well, let's move on then to the Great British Pound against the US dollar. The chart was looking quite nice till Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, everything was looking quite nice till Friday. Well, till, till this, this uh, informal Salzburg meeting and then it all went horribly wrong. Um, but again, from a, from a trading perspective, um, you know, you, you can't, you couldn't go against a trend. And again, as we spoke about last week uh, and, and prior weeks, you know, the, the mood in, towards Brexit has changed. Um, or had changed, you know, it was looking more positive that we were going to get a deal. Um, the, the noises from Europe were were positive as well. And you, you couldn't buy a dipping cable. And, and that continued until we got the Salzburg meeting. Again, you know, we've had, a, had this big move down. Uh, the sentiment has changed now between looking like getting a deal to perhaps we're going to have a, this no deal or hard exit. But after a big move, you know, 200 odd pips, um, we hit a big support point and that support point was down again at a broken uh, resistance area around uh, 130.50. Um, it's also the 31.8 the fib of the move up um, since August. And, you know, you add all this tech together and you and that's where you think that uh, a price may hold up. And, and it did on Friday again, as, as we pointed out on site. As we know, markets, OK, are driven by the technicals, the fundamentals and sentiment, OK? This must be an extraordinarily difficult currency pair to trade right now. Very, very difficult. Um, you know, for the last, well, for the last couple of years, I, I, I haven't wanted to trade it with a, as much gusto as I perhaps would usually. Yeah. And most of my trades have been very short term, you know, in and out, in, you know, intraday, just trading intraday levels. If I, if I get 10, 15 pip profit uh, straight away on a trade, I, I take half my trade off and I lock in the rest because you can't trust these moves. Um, you can't even trust it in these trends like we've just seen. You know, it's, it's been up since August uh, and then bang, you get a, a over 200 pip move south. You, yeah. know, you, you just can't trust it. So all you can do is, is learn to look at the levels, read where the bigger levels are. You trust those a bit more, but you still keep your, your stops tight. You take profit as soon as you can. You lock it in as soon as you can to, to break even or, or further into profit and, you know, reduce your risk as quickly as possible. And, and that's the way to play this pair at the moment. So just to have a few words on trailing stops. So basically you go into profit, OK, and you, you've got a trailing stop in the system or just a notional um, stop in your mind? Uh, it depends on your platform. If, if your platform has uh, allows you trailing stops, and most do these days, um, then that's the thing to do. You know, if, if you if you get that that profit, you know, if you're up 20 pips on something like cable, like today off the off the uh, 30 50 level, uh, we're up through 131. If you're long from down below, um, you know, you should be taking some profit up here in the first place. But then, if your platform allows it, run a trailing stop of of 30 pips behind. Um, and every time it climbs, your, your your stop goes up. 
you know, it takes the pressure off your mind. Uh, and if not, if you have to do it manually, I sometimes do it manually, then just do so. Just pick your levels as you go through the, the resistance points, then stick your stop just below those and, and you cover yourself all the way up. And as traders, that's all we want to do. We want to get our positions into profit and get our risk reduced as fast as possible. On that note, young Ryan, thank you very much indeed. Thanks.